It's time for another Tom and Shane podcast, and uh, well, hey, it's Thursday, um, so we're excited to be here with you. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, competitors, and we're not talking about the competitor down the road from you. Uh, we're going to be talking about the competitors inside your four walls, and this came to me from a a local business owner, I was asking him about uh, the intense competition that he has in his business. And uh, he was saying, my biggest uh, problems aren't, aren't my competition, they're uh, time and materials. And I'd never thought before about competitors being inside your four walls rather than outside your four walls. So that's what we want to talk about today. And, uh, you know, what you can do internally to uh, retain customers and keep things going, right, Shane? That's right. I mean, uh, for the last uh, 40 years, uh, one of the biggest uh, liabilities in major grocery firms, particularly public ones, on their financial statements is shoplifting. And, uh, you know, it's uh, standard to see a, a write-off of anywhere from 12 to 15%. And uh, with a asterisk, and you check the asterisk out, and they say ten percent of its employees stealing from them. So yeah, yeah inside or outside can be a different difficult thing to deal with in a brick and mortar operation. Of course, uh, in the age of the twenty first century and the internet and your own website and and so forth, you, you don't have that inventory issue. But uh, it, it, it yeah, cut, like, in employees, customers, uh, both uh, inside outside, they both present problems. Yep, that is a uh, that's a definite competitor. That's certainly for sure, and um, you know there are things you can do to kind of control things like that, uh, internal cameras, um, you know that type of thing, uh, whatever, and and uh, you know, but yeah, employee theft has always been an issue with uh, many businesses. So, but uh, yeah, who are who are the real competitors? <laughs> who are the real competitors out there? And that's what we want to. That's what we want to talk about. Um, the, um, the, the reason, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we wanted to do this is because of the internal forces. And, uh, you know, the real competitors uh, certainly are anything uh, that, um, well, let's have a new definition of the, um, of the term competitor, I guess. We should, we should go over there, Shane. What do you think? So... The uh, my new my new definition of uh, of the uh, uh, competitor is that it's any entity that causes a reduction in profits or negatively affects the reputation of the company, internal or external. So um, under the uh, that definition, uh, your real competitor might just be you. <laughs> yeah, could very well be. You, you know, you have to you have to follow your own heart when you once you start operating. Because you're so busy every day, again, always reviewing your business plan, marketing plan, uh, financial plan, and uh, cash flow. You know, cash flow is, is everything in a new business. So it's important that you uh, key on it and uh, make, make sure that you follow it daily. Because if you survive a year, you always have new year and new data to compare to last year. So you can always compare, year, you know, year to year sales. And that, that that's a big one. In, in, in any business is being in the position of, uh, from success of being able to compare year over year sales and, uh, and cash flow. Yeah. Well, where should you concentrate your efforts? That is uh, an important question. Um, good customer service is uh, one thing to think about, of course. Um, I use two banks in uh, Bozeman here, one for business, one for my personal banking. And uh, at one bank, no matter which teller I get, they always call me by name, regardless of the size of the transaction. At the other bank, they never call me by name. <laughs> and and uh, But, uh, you know, I still do business with them. And one of my pet peeves, uh, Shane, is... Um, is grocery stores, and I'm. I know you have them in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, and Canada. Canada has grocery stores, do they not? <laughs> oh yeah, we have some pretty spectacular grocery. Yeah, but uh, being a Western civilized country like you, it's yeah. astonishing that you you know you walk in and and you know the plethora of choices, the 
amount of fresh mm-hmm. product. It, it's a remarkable, remarkable thing that <laughs> we have the opportunity to live in such a great place. It, it really yeah. is. Well, that is true. But uh, if I were running a grocery store, if I were running a grocery chain, one of my pet peeves is that, uh, you know, I spend a nice piece of change at the grocery store. You know, I load up the, the conveyor belt with a bunch of crap and, uh, you know, they're running it um, and my bills, you know, over a hundred bucks most of the time, whenever we go, uh, sometimes more than that. But, but um, my pet peeve is that once they're finished with the transaction, while I'm either writing a check or punching my, uh, uh, you know, my card into their little machine, uh, it's like I'm not even there. You know, they'll talk to the bagger, they'll talk to somebody, you know, the other checker if they're not busy. And uh, that's always been one of my pet peeves that, uh, you know, if, if I'm paying, uh, paying them with a check, uh, my name's right there. They should be calling me by name. Thanks for your thanks for your business, you know, or whatever. The other thing is that uh, Walmart, uh, occasionally when I've been in line, somebody will walk over and, uh, you know, maybe while I'm loading the conveyor belt, they're going to change uh, cashiers. Uh, so, you know, one cashier leaves, another one comes in and they do the money in the drawer and all that stuff and whatever. And uh, I think it would be nice if they would just kind of acknowledge that, uh, uh, you know, pardon us for this interruption. We're going to, you know, change cashiers and appreciate your patience. Thank you very much. You know, just acknowledge that the customer who's there spending big bucks is doing something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important when you're interviewing someone to, do, to manage to to determine their social skills, skills. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, people that are introverted and quiet, you know, they're, they're not very socially active um, in public situations. So it's always nice to have the most talented people, you know, in that situation, as you're, as you're pointing out, with the social skill, skills to acknowledge others and be able to talk freely with people they don't even know. Uh, most people that go through a stand, uh, you check out stand, the cashier may know you because you're a regular customer. On the other hand, having never seen you, it's more important uh, even then uh, with someone that they've never recognized to say, well, welcome to our store. We have a lot of regulars and uh, hope we'll, I'll see you back here because I'm always at this uh, counter to uh, check you out. So yeah. a small compliment like that takes a few seconds. And, and, and you know, that's one of those things you know, you try and upsell, upsell someone to return to the store because uh, grocery stores are, are an intimate aspect of your daily life and your budget. And it's not really uh, in the expendable list. You know, people that have expendable income uh, go to other stores. They, you know, they don't go to grocery stores. So, uh, you know, it, it's important that the, that the people that uh, uh, you see in, in places that are basically a required place for you to go... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, they should deal with you more directly. Yes, I'm sort of a captive audience, but still, you know, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging you're there. When mm-hmm. I come up, they always ask me, "Did you find everything okay?" <laughs> my 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 most difficult uh, situation in these kind of uh, uh, brick and mortar stores, retail, and, and and food stores, is not knowing where things are in the store. You know, when people are on their mm-hmm. break or people are or uh, employees. You know, before work, you should make them walk every aisle. Um, after work, you should make them walk every aisle. They should walk around the up and down every single aisle um, before they start their shift and after they start their shift. So they get to know the store, the locations, and the aisles. So when people ask a question where something is, they can tell them. That, that's the, that's to me, is my biggest pet peeve, is walking into a store, asking for it, where something is, because it, I've never been in the store. And they can't tell you. You know, they just, oh, it's in aisle eight. And you go to aisle eight, it's nine. Nice. Close, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not even close to being there. Yeah, no, yeah, that's uh, well, and uh, every once in a while you'll get someone who will take you there. You know, yeah, it's a rarity, but uh, you know, I mean, that's good service when they when they stop what they're doing and say, "Well, let's go find it." You know, I'll show you where it is and whatever. Make sure you get it okay, and that's that's one of the 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 great things. And I I think. I think that's a matter of personality, Shane. I think some people have the personality that really likes to help someone and other people are there. How close am I to quitting time? <laughs> well, it's, it's not, and, and it's also a preference, you know, pretty, pretty, most often you, you, if you catch someone that's stocking uh, shelves, you know, they'd rather stop stocking and, and walk 
<laughs> Probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This you sucks. Know, Can I do something? Yeah. <laughs> do something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah right. Burner, there you go. You know, time burners. <laughs> you know, you can take your time and talk to them. But, you know, the, the, you know, you one of the things too that, that that's another pet peeve is that uh, you know if they do take the time and they're going to show you where you're going and you don't know where something else is that you know why not say to the customer what what else are you looking for today is there something mm-hmm. else or, did, yeah. are, are you aware where everything is in the store I mean, that's yeah. a great line for someone in mm-hmm. any brick and mortar operation to you know to sure. expand the the sale uh, to the customer and uh, these are the kinds of things that we want to inform new owners about so you can learn these types of mm-hmm. uh, tactics or strategies to, to train your staff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next we want to talk about, uh, I can't define customer service, but I know it when I get it. And I think most of us know that, right? We know when we get good service, we know when we get bad service and, and, you know, some guidelines I think uh, people should be aware of and probably these are pretty obvious, but maybe they're not to everybody that uh, businesses uh, aren't always neat, but you, usually they're clean, uh, you know, at least particularly the areas that customers go into. And I've always had a uh, rule, Shane, and uh, I, I know uh, when you ran restaurants and everything, probably people, uh, some of your, some of your people were in uniform. Um, you know, you had uniforms for the waiters and, you know, uh, bus people and whatever. But I've always had the rule that you dress equal to or better than the customer dresses. So, you know, that's always been been mine. Uh, what about you in the restaurant business? Well, yeah, it, it's standard fare in the restaurant businesses. It depends on the type of restaurants, sit down, uh, full service restaurants. A lot of people have, you know, a lot of white, you know, especially in the kitchen because you get it with the with the the rest of the laundry that you have if you you, you know on a contract you know table gloss uh, chef's uh, uh, clothing in in the kitchen and 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 so forth and you know standard fare white shirt dark pants in in the restaurant industry but hostesses dresses they may with you know cocktail dresses or pants suits but uh, the bottom line is is that you, you don't want people to be uh indiscreet about the way they dress, you know, this isn't like those wild pictures of people at Walmart you see sometimes on the internet. You know, you, yeah. you want to dress appropriately, <laughs> and you know, leave the house, you know, uh, looking yeah. reasonably well, and and not pretty, uh, for example, looking hungover. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, well, I've I've always thought that you know, personal appearance is a matter of uh, how you feel about yourself. You know, you you dress because that that is who you are. And, you know, if you're sloppy, then that sort of tells me you don't really care that much about yourself. So how are you going to care about my customers? Yes, that's very true. Especially, (laughs) you know, especially with women and this age of concern of hygiene and and particularly hair, you know, Mm -hmm. restaurants and food industry, a lot of hair nets people are wearing. Right. But women in the front, you know, they're, they're, they're particular, um, in restaurants about, you know, having their hair up or tied back, you know, you, hair falls out all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's true. Um, yeah. That's, it's a, yeah. a totally different issue. Be, it's generally shorter hair mm-hmm. and, uh, and not an issue, but yeah, the okay, a personal appearance is it, it's a dial up number for the inside concern for your competition and attractive looking people is, is another one that, you know, attractive people, uh, draw people and, uh, uh, yeah. to, to your uh, to your your uh, establishment. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, uh, nothing worse than uh, <laughs> paying forty bucks for a steak dinner and there's a big hair on on top of your t-bone. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not an exciting adventure. No, that's that's uh, not a that's not a dining experience that uh, most of us most of us want to have. So. Well, um, there are other uh, internal competitors uh, in our business that we want to that we want to talk about. Um, the, um, the one of the things I think um, um, is uh, answering the phone. This is critical, I think, uh, for most businesses that everyone who answers the phone needs to be qualified and trained to uh, answer whatever question the caller has, and. Um, you know, they, they don't need to, uh, you know, you know, 
putting people on hold and then, uh, you know, they got to go through three or four people and explain their thing over and over and over 16 times. Uh, that's just not, that's just not good. So, yeah, well, we had a landline growing up in the 60s and we couldn't answer the phone in our house until we could say this properly. My mm -hmm. health residents may ask who's calling. And yeah. when the person told you, uh, may ask who you are, you know, wanting to speak to. So you you mm -hmm. had to answer the phone that way or in our house, couldn't answer the phone. So yeah. it, it's always, you know, the natural uh, conditioning, training, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, that parenting provides to an individual that, you know, often ends up, uh, you know, surviving the rest of their life. And, uh, you know, I learned at a, at a young age how to deal with people on the phone in a courteous way. And uh, you know, that's why I always jokingly said in the business, I found myself in after the restaurant business and marketing, banking and investment, you know, that um, um, I gave good phone. I mean, I could talk to people, you know, by cold calling and, 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 uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I like to work on campaigns. I, I like to, you know, do, do the calling, at, you know, on campaigns and, and, uh, you know, calling people to make sure they're going to get out and vote and check if they're registered and so forth. So, yeah, it's a very natural thing once you're taught. But, you know, it, with all that's going on and what we're seeing today, uh, particularly with the millenniums and the X generation, you're, you're wondering about the parenting all the time when you see these issues uh, every day. You know, who's are, who are these? What, what are the, what's up with their parents and the parenting? <laughs> yeah, well. Well, well, we're not going to do parenting today, but we, <laughs> we are going to talk about the people answering uh, answering the phone. Linda's with us. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Linda. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you very much being here. And uh, well, the other thing about the, uh, you know, uh, if you're the uh, manager of a store or if you're the owner of a store or whatever, uh, you have to designate someone who has the power to do what you do if you're not there. Because invar invariably, someone will come in the store with a complaint and the owner's at lunch. Or, you know, I can't help you till he or she gets back. You know, and that's, there's no reason for that. You should, you should have a second in command, somebody. You know, it might be a clerk, it might be a assistant manager or somebody like that. But somebody needs to be able to uh, take care of that customer, resolve their complaint, and, you know, ret retain a customer. Yeah, it's very important. I, I learned that as an investment banker and a merchant banker that uh, when I did consulting for companies that were, you know, basically doing between $25, $50 million and wanting to know how they could expand and develop and grow, uh, one of the first things I analyzed was trust and delegation. You know, if you're signing every check, if you're overseeing every uh, invoice, if if you're constantly checking the inventory and the cash register, um, you know, that, that's a lot of time. And time management we've talked about is important. But if you want to grow, you have to be able to delegate and trust people when you delegate um, responsibility because uh, you have to depend on other people to build a company. Yeah. Well, and also, too, you know, if if that customer leaves unhappy because they have to make a second return to your store to voice their complaint to the proper person, you, you just might lose that customer to a competitor down the street. And there's no reason for that. Uh, you know, that, that shouldn't happen. That, that's why, you know, customers returning products is such an important thing. You know, you need to have a, a specific policy that everyone knows they're well-trained. Uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, different aspects of that. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, but, you know, replace the product, it, you know, don't charge someone, um, even if it's been, uh, you know, six months or something and, and they're not satisfied with it. You know, uh, we've talked about the stores that have been incredibly successful because, it, you know, there's a couple of that have literally replaced things that were broken in five, six, seven years old, but they just did it. Mm -hmm. So knowing that yeah. you could place something <laughs> like that, uh, you you always went back to the store uh, and because invariably people might even have a shopping list, but <laughs> they end up buying two or three more things than what they yeah. planned on buying when they first walked in your store. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an, it's an unincidental reality that that, that, that happens. 
Yeah. Hey, if uh, these tips are important to you and uh, you'd like to do videos like this, we use StreamYard exclusively uh, that uh, puts us up on the screen and puts the names and all the topics and everything that we uh, carry. We would encourage you to uh, invest, uh, investigate StreamYard. They have a free version and the link is in the description below. And also, we'd like to ask you to please subscribe and ring the notification bell so you're notified anytime we have a podcast up and like us, leave a comment. Uh, what are your uh, internal uh, co uh, competitors at your business? Leave us a comment below. Tell us uh, uh, what your uh, comments or what your uh, internal uh, competitors are. Uh, that would certainly help out others. And also we're on Patreon. Don't forget that. If you want to invest if you want to invest in us, we will invest in you because we've got great benefits uh, for those of you who uh, support us. And uh, you'll see those at the Patreon site. The link is below. And uh, you get our books, you get our uh, expertise, one-on-one, -on -one, all of that uh, with uh, Patreon. So we're happy to provide that for you, for your uh, faith in us. So. Well, I have a tip of the day for uh, everyone out there about uh, internal uh, competition. That's dead inventory. Whether you're viral or brick and mortar, if you have dead inventory, something that's not moving, that's the first thing you want to sell on a sale and sell it even at cost to get it out and not purchase it again because inventory is capital. And uh, you need if you have a product that you're not selling, you need to get rid of it and use the capital that you got from the sale of it to find another product to replace it with that hopefully will generate interest with your customers. So dead inventory can be a big inside competitor for you to have to deal with. Amen to that. So, well, in uh, the uh, less control you have over your internal uh, competitors, uh, the worse it's going to be for you. So uh, that's what we want to make sure that we've uh, covered today is that uh, take a really close look at your business internally. Uh, look at uh, look at employees, look at, uh, as Shane pointed out, look at your inventory, look at things you're selling. And uh, most importantly, the customer is, uh, they may not always be right, uh, but <laughs> you do need them. They are the lifeblood of your business. So by all means, uh, anything that's going to uh, upset a customer or uh, send the customer somewhere else, you've got to deal with. And uh, make sure that uh, that make sure that you reduce the number of internal competitors that you have. That's right. Customers are always right, and uh, the right customers will help you learn from the, what they purchase what's the most popular thing in your business. So, good customers are the ones that help you understand what you sell, uh, how how well they sell, and what can be the most beneficial to your cash flow, which is what makes a company grow. Isn't that the truth? Hey, don't forget, we're on radio day after tomorrow. We'll be happy to talk to you on the radio. We're on 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Uh, click listen now at KMMSAM.com. You don't have to do anything other than tune in. Uh, no emails left, no personal information collected, no, nothing. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to join anything. All you have to do is click listen live and listen or click listen now and listen. And uh, you can call us, you can text us. Uh, we cover a gamut of things, uh, including business, uh, politics, all kinds of stuff. So uh, we are uh, entertaining, if nothing else. So, And, of course, if you missed any of our past shows or any of our videos, uh, you can listen to those or watch those at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast over there, and that will get you all taken care of. So we uh, thank you for being here. Hopefully these tips have helped you out. And uh, if, uh, if you would be so kind as to leave a comment below as to what are your internal challenges, uh, you can help other people watching this video uh, get that information and see how you resolve any of those issues. So that's going to wrap it up for us. So we'll see everybody Saturday on the radio. Hear everybody well, Saturday on the radio, I guess. And you and I'll just see each other. But we will see you next Tuesday. We will. That'll, that's right. So, all right. Till then, we will see you down the road. Hey, thanks for being here.